Hello, everyone. I'm Lynn Cremondo for Yoga You Online, and I'm here today with a familiar face. If you're in the Yoga You community, Julie Goodmistad, she is a well-known figure as one of our senior teachers in our teacher trainings and a presenter of excellent courses. But in case you and Julie haven't met yet, she is a physical therapist and a yoga teacher over a 40 plus year career. She has trained hundreds of teachers, thousands of students, and she's worked with everything from elite athletes being in the Seattle area where there's lots of wonderful biking and hiking and running opportunities to working with people who are overcoming orthopedic problems or chronic pain issues. Her anatomy-based system of teaching brings both of her worlds of physical therapy and yoga together in a way that makes it possible for bodies of all shapes and sizes and abilities to practice. The other way you might be familiar with Julie, I'm just maybe by name, is that for nearly a decade, she wrote the Anatomy of a Yogi column for Yoga Journal. So Julie, welcome. Thank you, Lynn. Back. I'm just gonna yeah, thank welcome you. Welcome back. I'm just gonna make one small correction. I'm in the Portland, Oregon, not oh, Seattle. Portland, in case, Oregon, right. I in did case anybody before. tries to find me, I won't be in Seattle. I'll be in Portland. Portland. All right. Um, well, I've called you here today, Julie. <laughs> I've summoned you here today, Julie. <laughs> to pontificate on to one pontificate. of my favorite <laughs> topics <laughs> to celebrate and honor one of the underappreciated workhorses not just of our yoga world but of our world in general our feet day in and day out they serve as our grounding and contact point to the earth they take us where we want to go they go upstairs they run they hold us upright in posture, and yet we do not always return the love. Um, <laughs> way to put it, yes. <laughs> we have a tendency sometimes in yoga class to make, uh, to pay more attention to the bigger postures or the more exciting things. Um, but in, also in life, we're depending more and more on shoes that are so highly engineered that our feet don't have to be smart anymore. And I think that's a huge loss. Yeah. But with your background, I'm sure you can tell us how much of a loss it is when we don't take care of our feet. So can you just start there where the role of our feet in our lives, in our health, and why they're important? Yeah. Um, well, there's really two uh, directions to go with this topic. And one is what we physical therapists call activities of daily living, which is, um, as you said, standing, walking, stairs, running, if you're a runner, uh, pushing on a bike pedal, if you're a cyclist. Um, and my concern in that realm when it comes to the feet is that misalignments and muscle imbalances in the feet um, reflect up the line. So you can't look at weight bearing on your feet without looking at a whole chain of weight bearing joints. So if your feet are misaligned and unsupported, that is going to go up the line. It can contribute to ankle problems and common things like ankle sprains. Um, it can contribute to knee problems. There's a definite link between a twisting of the knees and certain misalignments of the feet. And then on up the line to the hip and the sacroiliac joints and the low back. So a common pattern that I see, for example, is when the arches of the feet collapse, the whole leg can collapse. And so we're not getting the support all the way up the line, really. And there's even cases where people say that their neck problems are due to one overpronated or collapsed arch. Um, so it, 
problems with the feet, misalignments, muscle imbalances, which means that one muscle group is weak and possibly overstretched, and its antagonist that has the opposite action is um, stronger but can also be tight and short. And so those contribute to misalignments. And then the whole thing uh, up the line of the weight-bearing joints. And that's just for basic activities of daily living. A lot of times people don't pay the price until later in life um, when we're starting to see arthritis and um, all kinds of knee problems that um, misalignments of the knee uh, and bad movement patterns of the knee contribute to things like torn meniscus and um, tendonitis that, that are very problematic around the knee, especially when we get older. Um, the other avenue, so that's activities of daily living. The other avenue, of course, is our yoga practice. And just like standing and walking, the feet form the foundation uh, from which the pose grows up. And so I'm talking about any standing pose that you would care to talk about when you're bearing weight on your feet. Mm -hmm. um, I observe students where I can see uh, the, the pose is collapsing, starting with their feet, the, the, the um, collapse of the foot um, does not allow for the energy to move up. And so it's from the good support and um, foundation, the feet really are the foundation from, from which um, we're gonna be able to grow up. And this has all kinds of interesting implications. So there's the physical structure of the pose, mm -hmm. which we would like to be grounded in our feet. That gives us stability. Um, from which the physical structure of the pose grows up just like the foundation of a house. I also think that there's energetic implications. Um, from having well-grounded feet, um, our energy flows upward. It's not just the nuts and bolts, the muscles, the joints, the bones, but it's also our energy channels. Um, I think when people are not grounded well enough, I'm talking about the energetic picture, mm -hmm. you can be more scattered and frazzled and have a hard time being present and paying attention in your practice and other parts of your life. Um, so that that's people who are not well grounded and well connected through their feet. And then the opposite problem is people who are collapsed in their feet and their energy can, because their energy doesn't move up, they can be kind of lethargic, um, low energy, even depressed. And so the feet are, it's not all your feet, but they are definitely a part of not only the structural, um, the structure of our beautiful poses that we practice, but also um, the energetic effects of, of our poses. That's so interesting. Um, you know, when you were talking about the issues that can happen up the line, it reminded me of that saying that the pain is not where the problem is. Usually the pain in the body is not where the problem is, that you can be struggling uh, with a hip issue. And the problem is that you're protein, pronating or supinating, or you're doing something yeah. in your foot but the yeah. other thing that you were talking about, the energetic thing, what immediately flashed to me is that when you're not standing properly, you're setting from the soles of the feet up a chain that is dysfunctional and so therefore takes more, literally takes more energy to locomote that structure than if things were properly aligned. So, so yeah. going to your energetic idea, yeah. you're literally having to do more work to yeah. move the structure. Well, it's, you know, it's a stationary structure, like if you hold a pose, so that's stationary, but it's also movement, uh, walking, but also flowing, if you're doing flowing standing poses, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it has to do with, you know, the body, the structure of the body, but I'm also talking about 
you know, psychological, absolutely. spiritual. Absolutely. Yes, energy. absolutely. Totally. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that, oh, you're depressed because your feet are pronated, but it just becomes, it becomes part of the whole picture of how your energy is moving or not if, moving. But what you're saying is if things aren't flowing efficiently, effectively, things aren't flowing. Yeah. And that's going to make perfect sense that energetically there would be some ramification for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the and and the other the other side of that is the people who are not grounded, they're not present in their feet. And so they're all over the place, scattered and frazzled and um, stressed and anxious. And so it, it's it can go either way, really. Now, the other thing that I want to touch on, and especially because of your um, background as a physical therapist, because I've been lately doing a ton of work on neuromuscular aging for my own clients, for my own study. Yeah. And I'm studying a lot about balance and fall prevention. And it turns out, you know, there's three elements of balance, see, hear, and feel. But this research is showing the proprioception is turning out to be one of the more important elements of balance. Yeah. And where does that start? Exactly. So that's <laughs> yeah. why I wanted you to talk yeah. about how we should be working with our feet on and off the mat to create more proprioception, because isn't that part of it with the engineered shoes? Your feet can literally go to sleep. You're just clunking yeah. along on these yeah, well, really, I think with any shoes, um, and of course, in our society, we wear shoes, and so people lose awareness of what's going on down there, first of all, and second of all, we lose um, mobility of the toes, which are, uh, the, the big toe is a really important part of your balance mechanism. So we lose we lose mobility, they get stiffer, They're, the toes are all clumped together in most shoes, so they mm -hmm. lose the ability to, to spread. It's called abduction of your toes and fingers. Um, and we also lose strength. We lose strength of the toe muscles, we lose strength of the arch support muscles. Um, and so you, you ask somebody, they come into a yoga class, first we ask them to take their shoes off, well, that's weird. And they take their shoes off and they can't, they're not trained, their nervous system is not trained to pay attention to their feet. And they don't have the strength or mobility. And that adds a lot to balance problems because people aren't feeling, if you are feeling your feet, if this is your big toe, and you are able to feel that your big toe and you have the strength in fibularis longus to press down that big toe, then that is a big part of your balance mechanism right there. I've watched, you know, hundreds of students when that big standing on one leg, whether it's tree pose or half moon or warrior three, when that big toe comes up, they're coming down. Yeah. It's, it's plain as day. So they don't have the control of their toes. They don't have the awareness. It's not just the toes, but the whole foot. And now, um, you were talking about the standing poses, but the feet in every pose, aren't yeah. they? I mean, even if you're doing a Dandasana and you yeah. are sloppy with your feet, then you're sloppy with Dandasana staff pose where you're just kind of sitting there with your legs extended. But isn't it true that we should be... <laughs> that the position of our feet in every pose, even inversions, is yeah. a factor I, in yoga. Thank you for bringing that up because I, I did mean to get there. Um, uh -huh. the, it, but it's probably most important in standing poses because of the weight bearing and because of the balance issues. And I think when, when you train for good alignment in your feet and ankles and legs, then that extrapolates out to walking around and going up and down stairs and, and the activities of daily living, the training and the patterning that we get when we do a well-aligned yoga pose. But then for the non-weight bearing foot, and so you mentioned Dandasana, which is one, but there are dozens of other poses where the where you're not bearing weight on your feet. So 
all of the forward bends, all of the arm balances where you're balancing bakasana being often the first one that people learn, um, the action of your feet in those arm balances, if anybody is interested in playing with those, I think they're really fun. But the action of your feet makes a big difference whether you can stay up or not. People don't know that. Um, inversions. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I like to think that when the feet are non-weight bearing, then people are paying attention to other parts of the pose. So if it's an arm balance or an inversion, we're just in survival trying to stay up, stay up there. But to complete the pose, instead of it just being about, you know, whatever weight you're bearing on your arms, so arms become the foundation, um, and that's what you have to pay attention to initially, but in order to have a complete pose, you need to engage your feet. You need to bring the energy, if you're doing headstand or handstand, you need to bring the energy up your legs all the way up to your feet. And it's in that time, I think, that we experience the bigger picture of yoga, that sense of wholeness. When we've integrated every cell in the body, we're competent enough to be in the pose, to stay there for a little while, and then to expand our intelligence and our actions so that it becomes wholeness. That's the unity that, of course, the word yoga means, wholeness. So you've worked with thousands of people, as I said, from people who are quite deconditioned to, I know that you've worked with, done a lot of work with bike uh, bicyclists. Yeah, I've worked with Olympic bike racers. Um, um, what, what, in your opinion, what are we not doing enough of in yoga to address the uh, stability, the strength, the alignment, the healthy disposition of our feet. And I would like to say on the mat and off the mat, because to me, everything you do on the mat is about enhancing your life off the mat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the yoga, yoga practice off the mat, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of teachers just uh, haven't been taught about how to cue foot actions. And so they don't know to, I mean, you've been, you know, they've been taught about, you know, knee alignment in warrior two, for example, or the rotation of the shoulders in downward dog. Uh, there's some common really good cues that we all draw on when we're teaching whatever level, but the, the foot cues seem to be lesser known. And I have observed that a lot of teachers, if they say anything about the feet at all, they say, lift your arches, which there's a couple problems with that. I mean, it's not that it's a bad cue, but there's a couple problems at least. One is that the people who are over pronated, so they have collapsed arches, mm -hmm. they don't know how to do that. And you can ask them to do it, but it's not in their movement repertoire. Their nervous system, their muscles don't know how to do it. Yeah. So you can say it over and over. They can't hear you. Them. They're trying, but they, they can't, can't find, find them with the map. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not in their kinesthetic repertoire yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And so I have some tricks that I use um, to help people get a feel for how to have an arch in your foot. Mm -hmm. The other problem with saying just a blanket, lift your arch, is that there are people that are over supinated. Their arches are too high. And that is the wrong cue for them because it takes them further in the direction of the imbalance or the misalignment. And so I think that teachers need to teach more with a, a view to balancing the pronation, the supination, the lift of the arch, the grounding of the big toe. Mm -hmm. And there's some very specific cues. Um, I've tried a lot of cues over the decades and I um, throw out the ones that don't work or I people look at me like, what in the heck are you talking about? 
Um, and so I have some cues that I use that I find people can, they can hear it and then they can put it in their body and into their pose. Um, and it is all about balance rather than just saying, lift your arches. Exactly. Well, luckily for us, you have chosen this as your next topic for a three-part course, and you are going to be talking about yoga for healthy feet. Yes. I'm assuming we're going to learn some of those cues. Yes. <laughs> and a little bit of anatomy. The anatomy of the foot and ankle is horribly complicated, but I have pulled out just a few of the muscles that are really important for yoga practitioners. I think, and then when they're hooked up with the cues about how to do the act, to do that action, rather than saying contract perineus longus, you say press down the base of your big toe. Right. Um, and so that is something that people can get a hold of is the command rather than the anatomy. But I think um, the the anatomy is interesting. It really is to find where these structures are on your body. Yeah. Well, I think as a yoga teacher and, and as a teacher of yoga teachers, I'll say this is important for you to know, but it's not important for them to know. Yeah. It's not important for them to know peroneus longus. It's important for them to know press down through your big toe mound. That's right. And That's have right. an awareness of that connection to from that to that. Um, so, so in my course, I'm not belaboring it, but some people are interested and it is kind of fun to see the muscle doing its job. I do think, yeah, job. but I do think, and I've, done enough of your courses heaven knows that <laughs> <laughs> that you do pick the relevant places that are of interest and when you have an overview like that and you're giving a cue like press down through your big toe mound in your mind's eye you know what you're asking for you know what you're looking for in a student or yeah if you're a practitioner, you know what your kind of the sensation is. I'm pressing down on my big toe mound, but I'm also feeling this. Yeah, the outer calf. Yeah. yeah, and if you look at somebody, you can you can actually see in the case of the aforementioned perineus longus, also called fibularis longus, um, you can actually see it if you look at somebody that's active that does walking or cycling. You can actually see it contracting, which is pretty cool. Pretty it's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> you've seen, I know you've worked with some really athletic. Oh my God. I can, on those race bike racer guys, I can find every little obscure muscle and tendon on their, on their legs. It's just a delight. I have to say. <laughs> now do biker guys, they wear the Clyde. Now we're, we're off topic. We'll get yeah. back on topic for, yeah. <laughs> while I have you here. When they wear the clips in their shoes, what yeah. happens to their feet? Are their feet just becoming part of the pedal of yeah. the bike then? Yeah, because the those those cycling shoes that have the cleats that attach to the pedal, they are rigid on the bottom and it just allows you to harness the, so they don't flex like shoes that you would walk in. You know, shoes that you walk in, yeah. you, it bends at the toe and they But even they don't. at that, would you not need to have well aligned ankles to be efficient in the pedaling would that still not apply that you would need you would and it affects the alignment of the knee if your foot isn't balanced as you as you push on the pedal but they have ways uh, i work with a really good bike fitter here in portland and he has ways of putting little shims between you know inside the shoe or in in the cleat so that somebody who tends to over pronate, it lifts up that inner oh, side of their foot them. so they have a better, yeah, yeah that, that it's quite a science actually. All right, well, but back to your course. <laughs> yeah, back to the course. It's it won't, not, really, it's not gonna be about, about cycling and biking. It's not gonna be about I mean, cycling. It's gonna be I'll about- I'll just say feet. that. <laughs> it's feet, feet. For, every, for everybody. And in particular in yoga poses. In what yoga are the poses? issues in yoga poses and which categories of yoga poses? And of course, there is a focus on standing poses because that's where it's critical to the foundation. And, yeah. and we'll have a practice and some practices within the lecture where you're showing some ideas of how yeah. we can strengthen and better uh, align. Line. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I'll probably see you there, Julie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. <laughs> we'll be holding down the fort again. <laughs> Well, great to talk to you and thank you for all that really good information about feet. Hopefully and, we, uh, we whetted everybody's appetite. They're so. anxious to. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see you in class. Yes. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Julie. Bye. And Thanks for coming today. Bye-bye.